Welcome back troglodytes to Would You Rock or Not? Today we're looking at a brand new artist inspired Gibson Les Paul. Now if you don't know who Vivian Campbell is, he is the guy who played with Dio as well as Def Leppard. He is a fantastic guitarist. You've probably heard him playing on many of different songs and just didn't realize that that's this guy. So this is what Vivian's new guitar looks like. There are a lot of people out there saying that this is a silver burst with a flame top. Now I don't agree with that. This is what a silver burst looks like. Once it ages, it looks like this, but let's look at this. This is not a transparent finish. You cannot see through it. I would say Campbell's new custom is more akin to a Cobra Burst. Alright, so your body is a solid mahogany body, so that means no weight relief, and you have a two-piece maple top with some decent flame in it. Now, reading here in the description here on Chicago Music Exchange's website, it says this guitar has a fast playing 1970s neck. So what that means is it's kind of a 60s profile. It's thin but not overly thin. But what I really like about this Les Paul is they brought back the maple neck. Not just any maple neck, this is the five piece maple neck. Now I can't find any good photos of this but if we zoom in here on the heel you can see it's actually a five piece neck. The three main parts are made of maple, and the two small strips are actually made of walnut. These are the same type of necks you can find on things like the 2550th Anniversary Les Pauls and some of the other higher end Gibsons from the 70s. It was interesting to see that he didn't opt for a volute though. However, what's really different is he went for the long neck tenon. That's something a 70s Les Paul wouldn't have. So this guitar is kind of a beautiful blend of 50 specs with 70 specs. Now again earlier I said this is not a silver burst by any means, but it is slightly reminiscent of it. And the silver burst finish did come out in the late 70s, so it really is a beautiful blend of guitars. The fretboard is made of rich light, that's just kind of standard on newer customs. It's harder for Gibson to legally source ebony, so they gotta be very selective of what they put it on. The bridge and tailpiece on this guitar are both Tone Pro's locking systems, so that's kind of interesting to see. Now the pickup selection is also out of the ordinary. You don't find exposed coil humbuckers on customs, brand new anyways, all that often. And these ones kind of have a very special finish to them. They're not quite white, they're not really cream, they really just match in with this guitar. Now the neck pickup is a DiMarzio Super 3, and the bridge pickup is a Super Distortion. Now there are a few other things that I personally see that strike me. The first one was definitely the color of the pickups matching with the color of the body. That was a big thing for me. However, you might not notice this, but this guitar has mix match knobs. You have three of the 50s styled ones, kind of the bonnet knobs, I think they call them. And then you have a single speed knob right here. I honestly didn't even notice that until just right now. However, the wiring is all 500k pots with orange drop capacitors. Another stylistic choice right here is the pickup selector switch, as well as the poker chip. It appears to be of like a silver color. That really does add to the overall appearance of this guitar. But perhaps the biggest thing that I really didn't notice until just now looking at it is there's no binding on the back. So this is kind of a Les Paul standard, Les Paul custom matchup in that sense. I guess Mr. Campbell never liked the binding on the back of the guitar. So overall, this really is an interesting Les Paul. From the mix match knobs to the whole stylistic choice of this guitar, it really is a beautiful blend of 70s and 50s attributes. This one is available in a signed and an unsigned version. The signed version is 5,999, and the ones that don't have the signature are 49.99. Here we can see some photos of him with his own signature Les Paul. He seems to be pretty happy with it. In these photos you can also see the other signature guitars that artists have had. The guy on the far left is Jason Hook. 
He's played with Alice Cooper and Five Finger Death Punch. And the lady in the middle is Lizzie Hale. She plays with Hailstorm. Now these two people have actually had their own signature guitars before. Miss Hale had a white Explorer, and it looks like Gibson basically just did the exact same thing, but made it black. Now Jason's new Explorer, I don't know a lot about it. However, his older Explorer by Gibson, the M4 Sherman, I see these things get listed a lot. I think stylistically, at least for me, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I would still like to try one. I'm kind of curious about this rubber thing right here. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm wondering if you can put picks in it or something. The only question left, would you rock Vivian Campbell's signature Les Paul custom or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. And regardless of how you feel about this guitar, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.